social media platforms, Alex, I would actually right away request you to post your your handles in the chat box. Those of you who haven't been following Alex, I will say it right now, please take off time and follow him. He speaks quite passionately on this subject and he speaks quite consistently on this subject. Alex, we are very honored to have you at Enterprise Uganda for the Business Recovery Series. And the entrepreneurs in the room are excited. I see Caroline from uh, uh, Expert Agro Tech Pharma Solution. I see Arthur, who is uh, research and uh, doing a bit of investment. I see Jimmy, uh, who is a consultant in primary education, agronomist, and soon uh, to manage a high school alumni circle. I see Ellie, who is a director uh, at Stan, Stan Cook Company Limited, which is which focuses on coffee, both Arabica and Robusta. I see Martin. Martin is a crop scientist and a grow business. I see Kelly from QI Pad. A number of people are in the room. But Alex, without taking any more time, allow me to welcome you to share with us today what you have prepared. Over to you, Alex. Hey, Alex, I think you have to unmute. We may have missed. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I was starting to speak I when I was wondering what was, was the what was the issue. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you so much, Ronald, for that. Um, it's really a pleasure. It's over 120 people. I'm going to try to be as diverse as possible. Uh, apologies if you see me in the sweater. It's a little bit of the winter and it's around 3 a.m. But when I noticed that Ronald is the one hosting, I was a little bit happy. I remember we, he was my lecturer uh, when I was doing my SCCA at MAT. That's close to seven years ago. And I'm hoping, Ronald, I'm doing you proud by the kind of information that we are trying to step, up, to step up into the steps. Certainly, certainly. Very honest. Very honored. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, beyond that, thank you so much for that introduction. And thanks so much to Enterprise Uganda that have kind of organized this. It's going to be engaging. I'm going to be monitoring the conversation in the chat if i lose you in any way possible or form just post the question i'll try to answer it um such that today is you go out with something and i'm going to cover i know i'm going to cover capital markets but there is no better way to introduce for me capital markets without introducing the the whole concept of investment finance even debt management now, I'm honored that I'm talking to business people. And if you have been following the news in the last one week, there has been some training statistics that has been going around that in 2019, we had close over 100,000 taxpayers, 100,000, that's companies we're talking about. In 2023, they are estimated to have reduced by a half. We are now close to around 56 city, and the majority of them have dropped to the, the lowest bracket. Now, that is from the tax side of it, but it tells you so much about our economy, mostly about employment, mostly about the security of our income, mostly what people are struggling with, which is finance. So you have to think about it that if we had 100,000 companies that are paying tax, which means they represent the people they were employing, and half of them are no longer on the tax register, if they have closed, that means there is a half of the people who have lost jobs. And then you have to think about it and say, what's the impact of that to the people? What did, would they have done it differently when they were still employed? But most importantly, what would the companies have done to make sure they are sustainable long run? So we are going to look at this in the two facets. The first facet is at the individual level. The second facet is at the company level because it's both ways. And I'm very passionate about this. And we're going to talk about companies. I've had someone who works with the DFCU. You, we're going to a little bit of analyze certain banks and I show you how they use financial markets to also hedge themselves but also for the individual, right? So, and because I have entrepreneurs, business people, I sometimes have a statement I say that 
not in any way to kind of devalue the entrepreneurship spirit, but to show people the alternative to making it big or to making at least making better financial decisions in that regard. So I thought I'm going to encompass those three. That's why you're seeing all the three topics there, not to just cover the treasury bonds at once and all oh, the bills or the unit trusts. Um, Paul, you might not be hearing anything. You might want to just log out and log back in. That might help you and see that you can hear us. Now, this is my icebreaker for today, uh, the financial hall. And it's simply to represent what all of us always are trying to get out. And even if that financial independence, when you're up there, and if you have gotten out of it, you want to stay, to stay up there. So most of our discussion today is going to kind of address exactly that. How do you get out using the financial market? Not only as financial markets, because, hey, I'm employed. I'm invested in financial markets. So that I'm not going to say that the bonds, the bills, the um, stocks are the only ones that can help you get out of the financial market, uh, the financial hall, but they can help you to kind of scale you further ahead of to get out of the financial hall. So that's the whole goal. The whole goal for me is always to say people are trying, those who are employed and have side second businesses, not side businesses, second businesses, you start that second business for one important reason, to make extra income. Your goal is to make extra income. If you're an entrepreneur, you started that business not as charity. Now, there are those who do this business for charity, but most of us start businesses to make income. So that means the ultimate goal is for your financial stability, your financial wellness, your financial independence. So if someone presents to you something extra, you'd be like, oh, that helps me to move away from the financial holes that I'm digging myself out. I always say most of us Ugandans always start from the negative when, we, when it comes to our black communism or black tax. So you want to have as much pumping up to get out of the hole as much as you can. That's where most of the things we want to look at come in play. So it's always very, very important. So even in that spirit, even when you are an entrepreneur, which is very, very good and very noble, you have to start asking yourself, what extra can I deploy my money in that can bring me a little bit of more money for me to be a little bit more financially independent? And that to me, is where the financial markets come in, in Uganda and globally, depending because some of you are well-traveled, uh, have access to other markets. So whatever we're going to discuss should kind of have you that at the back of your mind in regard to say that, hey, ultimately my goal is to make money. My goal is to be financially independent. Whether by being employed, I recommend it. Whether by being uh, an entrepreneur, highly encourage it or even by being an investor. Now, for this conversation now, after bringing those three out facets out, the employment, most of us are, that's one. The entrepreneur, what, which majority of you are covered well. Now, the investor. Now, the investor, you can be in so many investor. Uh, you can be uh, an investor in so many ways. But for today's discussion, we're going to talk about the investor in the treasury bonds and treasury bills, the unit trusts, the education funds and the retirement planning, and also using the same facet to building the for credit management, how now you have to hand around work around that, but also to create what I call for the company, to create what I call the investment income for a company. And now I'm going to start with the last bullet. Why? as we go up the ladder on this. And let me touch on the investment income. For, I'm going to use an example. Let me read into the chat and I see for those who introduced themselves. Um, okay, someone is working with Namangu Investment Company Limited in Kabale. Okay, I'm seeing, uh, let me use Odek Bernard, a graduate civil engineer and the CEO of Eden Construction. Now, I hope, God, Odek Bernard, you are okay to, for me to use you as an example. Now, 
you have a construction company. Your major business is the con the construction side. Your civil engineer, your major business uh, for your company is the civil, the construction, the uh, the site supervision. That's your income. That's your revenue. That for as long as that revenue is growing, your company is making a profit. Your company is indeed managing to meet its obligation. But that can that shouldn't be your only revenue as the company and that's very very important for companies to survive in the long run especially if you have proper books of accounts because sometimes it becomes hard to separate companies and individuals uh, in uganda but as we get more and as ura gets more and more aggressive it has to become more and more paramount so it's important for you to sit back and say i need to start investing for the company long term. And I'm not yet talking about the individual, I'm talking about the company. For those of you who have a company, like I'm using uh, Bernard here, the civil engineer. When the company makes a profit of 100 million in a year, don't you withdraw all of it? When you are taking 50% of it to expand your company, take the other 50% and invest it so that you create another income an investment income within your company, and it will help you survive. I work in Bermuda. Uh, Ronald introduced to that. And I work in financial services, investments, and everything. And we deal with so many different companies. We're dealing with companies that you, you, you end up dealing with investments of a university that right now, they will tell you that some of the biggest universities in the US, they make more money in the capital markets, which is the stocks and bonds and the mutual funds than they make using the tuitions. They have a 42 billion endowment fund that they just keep there investing. More, in a year, they make more money for them than the education fund because they have diversified. Sometimes for the survival of your company, you need to start reducing its core reliance on the core business without necessarily endangering the business. So I wanted to start with that because I have mostly business people. And that to me is very, very important that indeed, if you want to establish, if you want to create the company that income wise, it can sustain itself. Even in a downtown, it can sustain itself you want to start finding a way to introduce what we call investment income into the line of your revenue. If you operate, for example, a school, someone who operates a school, every single year you need to challenge yourself of the total profits you make, revenue and everything. How much of that do you go and invest for the benefit of the company? You might not necessarily always expand the schools. You do not necessarily always have to buy your neighbor's land to expand the school. That is one strategy. But the other strategy for the long-term success of the company is investment. Imagine if you are, and I have, um, I'm not so sure if uh, Eve has managed, has managed to join. She, um, she was supposed to join in it. During COVID, before COVID-19, that's when we inter they, they, at their company, they learned about treasury bonds. And somehow, somewhere, early, early 2019, they deployed close to 300 million in a treasury bond for the company. When COVID hit, it cut so much of their revenue. The only thing that could sure, assure them to pay salaries for a few people was the income that was coming from the treasury bonds. So for the company, and we're going to go through the strategy of the individual, but I wanted to start for the company because I do not want that point to get lost. For the company, the long-term sustainability of the companies is through diversification. Knowing that you run a school and the school's core revenue is the school fees, but investing long term, if you start now, in 10 years, you might be making enough money from the bonds to pay almost the, the school uh, teachers, uh, uh, the teachers, um, 
salaries without necessarily touching the revenue because you plan the alley. You run a civil engineering company. You run a salon. You run whatever company. You, you guys who are entrepreneurs are doing amazing jobs. But you also know, because being an entrepreneur is not easy, you also know the struggles of entrepreneurship in Uganda, the business ups and downs. So how do you create a sustainable business? How do you create a core of your company? Is to start investing deliberately in other products that bring you some revenue that even in your downtown, even when you're not getting breaking even, something is going to bring in a million that will pay uh, salaries for the people. Something is going to bring in a million that will help you to pay taxes. Something will bring in a million that will help your business to sustain itself because this is a business recovery series. We know what happened pre-COVID and when COVID hit, what, how the businesses are struck, struggled. Now imagine for those who which had planned the alley and started diversifying their portfolio. The spirit of entrepreneurship is alive in Uganda. Now we are trying to say the spirit of investment should even also come on the table. That even as an entrepreneur, you are, you are in a cabal, you are a farmer, amazing. But you know the seasonalities of farming and the challenges that I go through. I cannot sit here and I call myself an expert in farming. You will tell me more about farming and the challenges that you face. But then I will be the first one to tell you, maybe we need to, to start rethinking the strategy that every single season you invest, you deploy, you, you do your uh, season and you get your revenue of 20 million. Take off two or three million, 10%. Go and buy a treasury bond. Go invest in a unit trust. That revenue that is going to start coming in from the other things, it will supplement the agriculture at a point when you need that. But at the bare point is that this company will start surviving on two arms. It will survive on your core business as a farmer, your grow of cocoa, a grow of uh, coffee, Go whichever whichever biz, uh, product you are growing, or even exporters, you are an exporter. You're going to survive on this, then you're going to survive on other income. Most of us here are exporters. Every single day we are trying to buy dollars to try to get things into Uganda. And you struggle, whatever this. But a year ago you had a $10,000, now you have $1,000. Sometimes investing in the dollar helps you to sustain it, to manage it, to hedge that risk. Investing. The spirit of entrepreneurship, which is alive, now the spirit of investments. Now that's at the company level. I don't know if there is a question at that regard before I move on to the individual level. I'll pause for a minute. Okay, I think we are still good to go. Yes, Ronald, I think you have a question. You had a question? We can get Jacqueline in for a quick question. Then we can proceed and have the questions all at the end. Jacqueline, okay. please go ahead. That's the question. Um, good. good afternoon from China. Yeah. Um, sorry, I came in a little late when you're winding up on the companies uh, being able to buy the treasury bills and to invest. Um, what are the requirements, like document-wise? Thank you so much, uh, Jacqueline, uh, for that question. We're, we're going to cover that uh, for a minute because we're going to go through how this whole thing works. Um, for the what the requirements which are for the individual are the same as the requirements for the company. Now, this is something that I'm very I, I, I tend to use when I'm discussing this for the individual. Now we have talked about the spirit of entrepreneurship 
which is alive in Uganda. They tell you Uganda is one of the uh, the top 10 uh, in entrepreneurial companies in Uganda, in the world. Top 10, that's incredible. Thanks to the amazing spirits of each and every one of you and so many people. We are trying, we are enterprising uh, the, the work the Enterprise Uganda is doing and so many other organizations to kind of make people to start something. No matter however small it is, now we're trying to also introduce what we call the investment mindset, the investment strategy, the investment thought process that at end of, at every single end of the day, you have something you are deploying. You have something that is coming out from the capital markets. Capital markets are here to work for you. One day maybe uh, uh, Ronald and Derek we shall come back and talk about the capital markets from for the entrepreneurs where they can raise capital beyond on the capital markets, but this is for the investment. Now, you as an individual, for me, this is what I call when we are to go through, if I'm to go through a full personal session with someone, this is are the kind of the steps I would start with. Why are you investing? The purpose. Now, I've started with the company and I've given you the reason. For the company, it's always to introduce, increase your revenue. Someone here works with DFCU. And I'm, if I'm to talk about the banks, right now, banks are making it close to 50% of their revenue from investments, from uh, treasury bonds and bills and stocks. Uh, wider trading, let me call it wider tr investment trading, almost 50%. Five years ago, almost 80% of their revenue was through loans and fees and commission. They are diversifying every single day. And to those who have friends in the banks or work in the banks, um, I was privileged enough to work in a commercial bank uh, back in the day in Uganda. You know when the bonus time comes, the people in the treasury department are uncomparable. They get the biggest chunk of that. Why? They bring in the most money right now. They are very, very, very important. Very strategic. Because they have understood that in wealth management is no longer for the jo for the a joking subject, right? They have understood that deploying capital in somehow what we call the passive way and getting almost 10, 12, 13% without risking the core capital of the business is a good thing. Now, if the companies like that are doing that, what about me as Alex, right? Stanbic Banker is a public company, so I can use its financial statements to kind of illustrate that. Stanbic Bank has close to six trillion in deposits. It has close to 10 trillion in uh, assets. And they are invested in financial assets by a close to five trillion, close to five trillion, between four to five. That's money bringing in money almost every single day without them doing nothing. No, they are doing something. But to the revenue they are getting from trading is using, let's say, a hundred, some of the best minds of CFAs, of investment minds, minds in, in Uganda, is almost the same revenue they are getting from their loan book or from their fees and commission uh, by deploying tens of thousands. That tells you it's the same. For you, if you are running a school, the revenue per teacher for the school strategy and the revenue you might need to, you might make by just investing some of, a little portion of that, some money into a treasury bond is different. To invest in a treasury bond, you just need to sign your form and move on. To invest, to increase your revenue in a treasury bond, you just have to increase a little bit of a deposit in there. Investment purpose. For me, the investment purpose for every each one of us is to make money, to be financially independent, whether it's through a company or an individual. Deploy that money. That way that every single passive income is one of the untalked, it's an eighth wonder. Something where you put money and go do your other things. You're a farmer. You put money and money works for you. Yeah, they use actually necessary uses that I love it so much. Money working for you. Deploy your capital. Go do your other things. You're a farmer. Do it. You're an engineer. You do not need to know to specialize in capital markets like what some of us do. That's the reason. 
return objectives, you must be in position to analyze the return objectives of where you're deploying your money. Now, I'm going to, on return objectives is where it gets important. If you are an entrepreneur, you have to start thinking ab about and say, by the way, in my company, what is my return? For whatever I'm doing, what are my return every year? What, at what point do I make break even? Uh, a friend of mine recently was running a poll and they said, most businesses in Kampala, they operate on margins of between 5 to 10%. Net margins after everything. So if you're running a hotel, and every single year you are making 10% per annum. That means if the hotel, if you are deployed 200 million, you're going to make 20 million in profits. Now, a treasury bond is giving you a net return of 14%, 13%, way outpacing the hotel business. Does it mean you close the hotel and move all your money into the bond? No. But diversifying helps you starting getting a 5 million every single month and putting into a treasury bond can allow you to start bringing in money passively that will now supplement the business that even at a time when the business is struggling or even when a time when business you want to expand, you are not risking everything. You know that saying where they said, do not put all your eggs in one basket? Now that's understandable because sometimes people will say, open up another business, which is also good. Now we're also saying, yes, open up another business if you have the capacity to manage it, but also invest. That's also another business and it will rival you. Entrepreneurs are some of the core, core people of our economy. But not to risk everything, not to be a luasa. I'm apologies to using that example. Sometimes when the financial hardships come, this, this treasury bond that you have been investing or you invested in is what is going to help you. Majority of us here have real estate. We have invested in rentals, apartments. And let me talk about this importantly. When you get that rental income, don't only eat all of it. When you get that rental income, do not... Try to look for the next 50 by 100 in Buama just because they told you they are no longer manufacturing land. So go on an acquisition spree. Sometimes it's also you have to assess and say, I'm putting this 10 million in Buama, promising that this is the new satellite city. How much is it going to grow in the next 10 years? Maybe put that extra 10 million in a treasury bond. Maybe in 10 years from now, you'll have more money to go buy someone who went to Buama and actually buy two or three of them. That investment mindset that you have to follow the return objectives. You have to follow how much am I getting by deploying an extra cost. And that the return objective brings the position of marginal returns. And this is very few, very few people, very few people do this. If your company has reached its maturity level, deploying an extra 1 billion or 100 million or 10 million, especially through borrowing. To, you think you're going to expand. Sometimes you, the marginal returns of doing that activity are so minimal. They're not going to add on so much onto your company. Yet getting that money and investing it in a unit trust, investing it in a bond will make an impact onto your company. So as you think about your cycle of your business, you have to think about it this way, that for the business or for me as an individual, I run a school, I run a hospital, it's operating, it's giving me profits of close to 50 million. That's when the bank people want to lend you money because they are seeing you're making a profit. Ask yourself, if they're going to lend me 200 million to expand the hospital, is it going to expand my revenue that much or even my margins? That's a question entrepreneurs do not ask themselves and they end up borrowing two years down the road. They are literally struggling because when you look at the money they are taking out of the business to pay the loan is extreme. It's just starting to injure the business. Yet at that point, the goal should have been, okay, let me take a step back. Yes, my business is growing very well. 
let me diversify through it. Let me always get a 5 million, a 2 million, a 1 million every single month, buy a bond. In three, four years down the road, you'll have a business that is standing on two things. You will have a business that is standing on the salon concept, standing on the hospital, standing on the consulting company. You will have a business also standing on the investment arm, bringing in close to 12, 13% every single year as a return. So that's the concept of the return. Then we go to liquidity versus wealth assessment. We know entrepreneurs, it's very important to have money that is easily accessible. Many of you here know about overdrafts and that concept. I cannot overemphasize it. So when you are deploying investments, you have to think about it that way, that at any point I might need this money. That's why we teach it these two things in the same concept. We teach the liquidity, the unit trust, and wealth, the treasury bonds. I have over 300 people on this call. And my first challenge I'm going to put out there, and you, it's a reflective challenge to you. How much money on average have you kept in your bank account, your savings account? And how much has it brought you in the last one year? Just think about it that way, that in one year, how much money am I keeping on my bank account? You have not touched it. Maybe you, there is always a minimum that you know this one. If you're a business, maybe you always have 15, 20 million. But you know, every time you just touch your 5 million and you remain with the 5 million, bringing you no revenue, money just sitting there. And they just actually charge you fees every single now and then. Now that's the speed where we're saying we need to learn to deploy our money better. Even when you are operating a, a, a business in downtown in Chikubo, Yes. We know every single now and then you, are, you need the money to go to Nairobi, to go to China. Uh, Jack Reno is in China to import things, right? If you are an exporter, you always need money to facilitate those transactions, to pay salaries. Invest that money. Put it in a unit trust. You do not have any business to have at a bare minute. You have to create, you have to establish a let me call it model. You'll have to model your business and say at any one point you always need five million at any one point. Maybe that's the money that should always be on your account. Everything else, sweep it into a bond, sweep it, sweep it into a unit trust. That way, the liquidity can be addressed by the unit trust while you're still earning money. The wealth can be addressed by the bond. You are paying salaries. Most of your entrepreneurs, amazing. You are paying salaries, right? You chances are you know you already have the money for the next one year to pay the salaries, but it's sitting on the account. No, move it to a unit trust. By the end of the year, you will have the bonus to pay the people. You employ someone at home, the maids, uh, the house helps. Whoever you employ, your friends, everyone. Right now, I kind of, it's kind of my ambition that almost everyone who has a bank account should have a unit trust account. A, a bank account is a savings account. So everyone who has a savings account should have an investment account. And that's why I have to think about it and say, I have always 10 million on this account, bringing in nothing, put it in a bond, put it in a unit trust. Let it bring in that income. If you have, a few of you here work for uh, donor companies, if you are lucky, if you are one of those. A month ago, we were designing a, uh, an investment strategy for an NGO because even NGO, they are realizing it's becoming unsustainable to just be reliant on just donors and they are starting, trying to tell them when you go to ask for money put that the investment concept in that let them give you money that will sustain this business when politics hits or when the donor funding is cut off and the goal was every time we know they get that money 
in donor companies, uh, NGOs, they get money six months in advance and they let that money sit on bank accounts for six good months. You get a, a one billion to sit on the account for six good months just to always pay tax, pay, pay salaries, or if you are not paying salaries, to pay fuel and pay per diem. Yet, if you go, if you can project what you're going to spend every single month, you can sweep all that money in a treasury bill. Oh, you can sweep all that money when it comes in a unit trust account every single month. You withdraw just enough, and I would, for a billion, you you're looking at almost every single month getting a, at a minimum ten to twelve million. And you told them the amount you you're going to end up making by doing this will pay the salaries of five six people. So you're no longer all of a sudden six people are not reliant on the donor money. All of a sudden, after a year, you have enough other income to sustain you somehow somewhere. That's the spirit of the investment you're trying to say. Invest. The diversification, we have talked about it elaborately. You are entrepreneurs. You have whatever you are doing. You are, if, even, even if your entrepreneur spirit is real estate developers, those who buy and flee. Yes. Do that. But even if you just take 10% of that and invest you are diversifying. You do not always buy every single now and then. Now, that man that is always in your wallet, on mobile money, or on a bank, put it in unit trust. Every time you have a deal to do, with all that money, there are companies that are giving you in within 24 hours. They give you the return, your money which when you want it, and you can do your transactions, diversification. Then you review the performance every single year. Entrepreneurs, you are amazing at reviewing how the company is doing. Though sometimes we fall short and that's why sometimes we do not foresee when problems are coming. But it's incredibly important in the investment journey that you must review. If you deploy, a, if you buy a treasury bond for two years and it gives you just 12%, then you have to think to yourself, why did I buy for two years? I should have bought for five years. Which and where do I make more money? That's why sometimes you have to even engage investment advisors to take you through, to help you develop, to at even a bare minute, to even help you start this journey of investments. I'll pause for a minute and I see if I have questions. I'm seeing it. My, the chat is blowing up in this regard. Uh, so someone is asking, Alan, what's the shortest time period uh, to invest in a unit trust um, uh, in a... Um, a treasury bond. So I'm going to, okay, let me go through that at this point. Uh, give me a second. I'm sharing this calendar, uh, which I'm going to use now to go through the treasury bonds and everything at in this regard. And if I'm to start with the question of Alan, what's the shortest period? Now, there are two things. There is what we call the treasury bills and the treasury bonds. Now, the treasury bills and the treasury bonds, you would say these are brothers and sisters. This is um, just that one is, is capped at stopping at one year. So treasury, all, all these are treasury securities. They are offered by the government of Uganda or by any government. By the way, the treasury bill, treasury bond is not a concept of Uganda. It's a concept of global. If you are in the US or if you can access the US market, they are there. If you are in the UK, they are there. If you are in Kenya, they are there. China, uh, Zimbabwe, South Africa, everywhere. Treasury bills and treasury bonds, it's a concept globally. In some countries, they might be calling them a different name but it's the same concept. Now for Uganda uh, or even Kenya specifically, the treasury bills are uh, when you are investing for either 91 days, 182 days or 364 days. That's this column here. So the shortest period you can invest is for 91 days. 
for treasury bills. Then for treasure, what they call a treasury bonds, they start in two years, the two year, the three years, five years, ten years, up to twenty years in Uganda. So let me make this. I'm hoping um this is big enough for people to because we are going to go through this and what I have documented here that is important. Now, when you are investing, I when you are investing in the treasury bonds or treasury bills, it's like your entrepreneurs, your money is not just there to be to move around. You are thinking about what it might do for you. So that's the investment strategy. That's why you're saying why. You know you might need this money in one year's time. Then buy a treasury bill for 364. If you know your investment horizons, it guides you on which, what, which one to buy. If you are a young person, 25, 26, you haven't yet figured out what you're going to use your money for, or you're trying to build a very good financial nest, invest for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I'm one of those, uh, if you have, if you are on Twitter, for the last two days, it has been that deepening message. Let's not downplay the long-term goal. Invest, look forward and say, yes, in 15 years, you'll be there. If you invest now, it's worth it starting to deploy capital for that benefit in 10, 15 years. But if you're a business person, you are an exporter, you are an importer, you know you need money in maybe in, a, in a six months when you are going to, maybe you know you import every six months. So invest in the six months cycle, the 122, the 182 days. Or at a bare minimum, invest in a unit trust. So the shortest is 91 days. Let me first answer some of the questions um, uh, that way. I don't leave anyone behind. So, um, I'm trying to look, I'm trying to look for our questions here. Give me a second such that I don't forget, I don't leave any question in, that's out there. I need more clarity on how to go about bonds. We're about to go into that. Uh, how do I start to invest in bonds? I'm about to go through that. What's the difference between the treasury bill and treasury bond? Bernard, I hope I've answered you. Um, and how do unit trusts work if they are different from treasury bills and treasury bonds? Okay. A unit trust is what helps you. A unit trust is a company. It's uh, These are fund co management companies. They are fully regulated by Capital Markets Authority. And there are six so far in Uganda. We hope more will come. We have Old Mutual Investment Group. That's the subsidiary of the insurance company. We have ICEA management, wealth management. It's a subsidiary of the ICEA insurance. We have Sunlam Investments. It's a subsidiary of the Sunlam insurance. We have Britam Investments, subsidiary of Britam. We have SBG Securities, subsidiary okay. of... Um, Stan Big Bank, then we also have Zeno doing an incredible job. So those are the six fund management companies we have that provide unit trust companies. These are fully regulated. They publish their financial statements. Over 3 trillion people are invested in such a product. So it can take advantage of that. You can choose any. I'm not going to tell you go one or go the other. You can make a research and say, which one should I go for? Which one will simplify? Which one will give me higher returns? But the companies are there and they can help you to make a decision on to say, should I go with uh, any of those? They are big companies. They, are, they have custodian companies. They have trust companies. So this is not your typical Kak and Alex co that you're trusting money. No, you're going a little bit hard and CMA regulates those companies. Now, someone asked, why should I invest in a treasury bond versus a unit trust? A unit trust is an investment account. Unit trust on average, let me, let me be clear. Unit trust can help you. One of the best benefits of unit trusts or 
the unit trust product is you can access your money anytime you want. You can put it there today and tomorrow you go to them and say, give me back my money. The deal has come through. They will give you your money. Plus your, plus your profits you would have made in the days the money is there. You can put your money today. You're thinking you don't need it for the next one year and you need it in a year, in three, four months there. Unit trusts are very, very critical when you're deploying what we call an emergency fund investment, which is very important. We talked about the lifeline of companies. At the core of lifeline of companies is investment for emergencies. Emergency funds, do not leave it in the bank not to earn a single coin. Put it in a unit trust. You can access your money within 24 hours. We all know whether it's the emergence for the company or emergencies for the business, for individual. And one of the things, even for proper planning, you know you are an entrepreneur, you employ two, three people. You know you have to pay salaries every single month for them. Now, at that point, you might not put that money in a bond. You go, you put it in a unit trust. That way, you know, Every single time you want some money to pay the to pay the salaries, you ask some of the money, you pay the salaries. But the money is earning some money daily. Now, the treasury bonds, on the other hand, they do the same. And they offer higher interest or higher coupons than the, than the unit trust. But sometimes for you to invest, the best benefit of bonds, you have to play the long-term game. When Derek reached out, he asked, I want people to understand one of our biggest challenges is education. Planning for our child's education, we sometimes feel like, ah, oh, as long as I'm employed, as long as I'm working, it's okay. I know I'll pay them for, I'll pay the senior six even at university, I'll pay for them without any planning. Yet in a more developed society, an investment-led mindset society, we must establish what we call education funds. If you're a parent right now and you have a child, no matter where they are, whether they are 10, 5, or even 2 years, think ahead and say at university they will need this. Or even at a bare minimum, you want to say, at when they start their life at 25, I want them to have a trust fund. Yes, leaving them a company, creating this company, and you say, I'm waking up every single day because I want to leave a company for my, for my child. Incredible effort, respected. But also diversifying some of what you might want, want to leave them is very also very important. That's why treasury bonds become important. That you can, if you know your child is two years, you can start investing in a 15 year bond right now. By the time the child is at 18, you're not going to go and say, where do I get school fees for university? The treasury bond will be your lifeline savior. If you say you are 20, you are uh, an entrepreneur, you do not have any SSF, like you're a farmer. You don't know when at 60, what will you be living on? Do not take the risks. Don't put all your risks in, the, in that farm. Diversify some of it. Put it in a bond. When you're 60, the bond might be in position to give you enough money that will help sustain you in the long run. So to kind of bring it home is to say, treasury bonds, especially those which are five years and above, provide a higher return than unit trusts. But that's if you are willing to see that investment beyond the five-year term. If your investment goals are for just one year, two years, less than one year, you might be better served by a unit trust. If you have money, you might at any one point in need. That money will just keep on bank accounts to sleep. Every single now and then they send you a notification that every time you transact, they charge off 2,000. You're like, but what are they charging me 2,000 off me for? That money is better in a unit trust. Emergencies, everything in a unit trust. Keeping money on mobile money, it earns you nothing. Yes, they started giving us something, but when you compound it, it's 2% in a year. A unit trust is giving you 11%, a minimum 10%, all of them, whether it's UAP or the mutual investment group, whether it's ICEA, 
whether it's Sanlam, Britam, SBG, or Zeno, a minimum 10%, that if you have 10 million, after the year, they will give you 1 million. If you have 100 million, after the year, they will give you the 10 million in profits. So the numbers support moving money from this savings account that just sits there to investment accounts. That is not to say, no, that's not to say you should close your, invest, your savings account. They are important. But you structure them. That where do you, you are, not, you are not here to do charity. That just because you open the bank account, so you must keep money there. No. Keep money there that benefits you by the money being on that savings account. Then move the rest into the investment vehicles. So as you can see, and it's very important for me to talk about um, taxes because the income you get from treasury bonds incurs tax. Treasury bills and the treasury bonds incur a minimum of 10% withholding tax. The question is always to say, so which one should I go for? Now on the screen, you can see uh, any treasury bill has a tax of 20% on the income. And also the treasury bonds of two years, three years, and five years have a tax of 20% on income. So you can see here, let's use the 15 year. Someone has put these lines here. I don't know if they are, I don't know how to easily remove them to make sure. Do, 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 do. Okay, give me a second. I need to rub off something here. Yeah, so that people can see clearly. All right. So you see, we have this 14. So for a, a 15, a five-year treasury bond, it offers 14.125. That's what it offers uh, right now. But when they take off the 20% tax, so that means your net return is around 11.3 per year. So you have to also think about that and say, if I'm buying a bond, when they take off tax, what is the return? And yes, someone has talked about that unit trusts do not offer tax. Yeah, there is no income on the unit. Uh, there is no tax on the uh, income from the unit trusts. Yes, that's very true. There is no tax, but there is management fees. So it's not a matter of saying there is tax, there is no tax. It's a matter of saying, what is the return for me? Be viciously selfish when you are assessing this. To say, if you make more money in a unit trust, or if your investment goals guide you to a unit trust, go to a unit trust. If the goals guide you to a bond, go to a bond. Then the bonds which are 10 years and above, you can see 10, 15, 20 years, the tax is 10% on the income. So you can see for the 10 year bond, the coupon is around 14.375. By them, they take off tax, you are almost getting around 13% net. And this is before I even start talking about compounding. 13%. The 15 year bonds, if you if right now you invest in a 15 year bond, it's go for 16%. By the time it takes off tax, you are having around 14.4% net. 14.4, that's close to 15% of doing nothing. That if you deploy 100 million in a bond right now, every year they will be giving you around 15%, 15 million, right? So the concept of tax and comparatives is very, very important. Your investment goal guides you to which kind of bond you should buy. Now, we might not necessarily exhaust this to address your specific individual needs, or your specific company needs and which body you should go for or how you should allocate. But like I said at the beginning, diversify. It's okay to have some in a unit trust. It's okay to have some in a bond. It's okay to have some bond which is five years. It's okay to have some bond which are 15 years. Diversify. And for you to easily say, to, how do I do this in the most 
efficient way that brings me the best return possible or optimize my money. That can be a conversation which is a little bit longer, but that is the concept that I can put, I can utilize all of these products at once without necessarily injuring the, my core business, whether I'm employed, I'm self-employed, um, I have a side business or second business, whichever the case is, you can utilize these products. I'm seeing a few questions in here. Let me look at them. Are circles exempt from the withholding tax? No, they are not. The withholding taxes on incomes, um, they are not. They are not collectives, yeah. How much of the deposits into such trusts are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund? Now, this is a good question. Now, Deposit Protection Fund protects bank accounts, not management, not fund managers. Fund managers are protected by and regulated by the CMA. And all that money now I've and this is important actually. Let me speak on this. Fa a fund company, fund manager company like OD Mutual, like ICA, I actually I'm going to talk about all the six of them because it's important to appreciate the whole industry instead of just one player. All the six companies, they have, they follow a specific role. They are fund managers. Their job is to deploy where to put your money. But they are not even the one who are in charge. Who there is there is what we call the trinity the finance trinity in fund management. They have what we call a custodian. A custodian is a commercial bank. The custodian is the one who keeps the money. It's never the fund manager. So when you go and say, I'm invested in ICEA, UAP, Sunlam, Britam, SBG, or Zeno, it's not those companies that are holding your money. Their job is to make the investment decision. The custodian are always commercial banks. Now, it's the same way you trust to put your money in Standard Chartered Bank. That's how Standard Chartered is the custodian of Sunlam. The same way you have your money in KCB, KCB is the custodian of ICEA. Stanbic is the custodian of SBG like that. Then, so like I said, it's the whole, the finance trinity, the custodian is independent, fully regulated. Then we have what we call the trustee. Now the trustee oversees all the operations of the fund manager. The trustee is what you would call the representative board of governors or board. And the trustee is also a commercial bank. And that commercial bank is always most times different from the custodian. So you have three companies that are managing your funds. The fund manager that is responsible to deploying your money is not the one holding your money. The custodian who is responsible for holding your money is not the one who makes the decision on how to invest it or signs it off. The trustee who oversees the operations of these two and calls them to order does not handle your money. And why is it that to build the trust in this business? And this is global. In the global world, that's how it works, the finance trinity. You have the fund manager, you have the custodian, you have the administrator. They are always different. Even if they, are, even if they tell you they are the same, similar company, they will tell you, yes, but different departments, different people. To tell you that the custodian and the um, fund manager are different. Custodian and the trustee are different. It's because of that. It's that important to make sure capital markets and people's investments do not get misused. And I assure you, in Uganda, we, the first unit trust came in 2013. Nothing has happened to that in that regard. Zero. Okay, let me uh, get a few more questions before I move on to what's needed. Uh, Rebecca is saying the tax rate of a 10-year bond is 20%. No, it's 10%. Um, treasury bills is 20%, yes. 
can uh, Simon is asking can the interest on the bond be reinvested on the same bond? Yes, you might want to buy it on the uh, on the secondary market or go and if you know if it's going to be reopened to issued by Bank of Uganda, you can still go and invest in Bank of Uganda. Now, let me, uh, someone asked, how do you then invest in treasury bonds? Um, which brings me to the, what, the process. Now that will, by the time we reach this level, I'm assuming now you have, you're at a decision where you're saying, I want now to start this investment journey in the treasury bond. I want, I have a, a 1 million to start using and deploying it. How, what do I do? Now, the team at Bank of Uganda that is the ultimate controller and uh, promoter of treasury bonds, the system they are, they are using is reliant on commercial banks. So if you already have a bank account with whatever commercial bank, tier one commercial bank, that's all you need for start. Now I'm very insistent on this from the tier one because it's important. Right now, we know certain banks are going to tire two or tire threes. But let's stick to tire one. I'm assuming, let's say you, you have an account with Centenary Bank, you have an account with Stanbic, uh, Bank of Baroda, NCBA, KCB, Equity, BFCU, all of them. You just have to walk to them and ask for what we call the CDS form. So the, it's a two-pager form to fill up and they help you to open up what we call the CDS, the CSD account, Central Securities Depository Account. Now that account does not sit with that commercial bank. It sits with Bank of Uganda Systems. They are the, they are, they are the controller of the Central Securities Deposit. To an extent that if you say, I know the question people always ask, what if what happens if the bank closes? No. When the bank closes, it doesn't impact your investment account. That account is with Bank of Uganda. Except if, let's say, something happens in Bank of Uganda and the Bank of Uganda closes, but we know that's extremely highly unlikely for Bank of Uganda to close. And it's actually very important at this point to talk about that. The first treasury bond in Uganda was offered, was issued in 1969. 1969. And since then, the Bank of Uganda technical team has never defaulted. Whether there is in Amini's government, whether during the time when Amin was gone and we had six, seven presidents in one single soup, when it was Obote one, when it was aborted to, when it was the during the World War, whether it was uh, the Museveni's, uh, President Museveni's initial three years in the 1986-1990, whether from 1990 to now, not a single time have they defaulted. They have always met their obligations to the investors. Whether the bank has closed the Crane Bank, you had opened your CSD account, in Ukraine Bank, when your account moved to DFCU, your money was deposited in DFCU. So it's important to kind of put it out there. Does that mean it, it can't happen? I actually, uh, let me be, uh, let me use this finance language. Def uh, banks, when you lend money to Kakande, my default might be me to disappear and I say I will never pay you and I refuse. Countries globally do not default like that. In Uganda, it has never happened, but in case it ever happens, they don't default and say, we shall never pay you, you move on. Do what you want to do, take me, no. What can easily happen and can potentially happen, and the remote, the risk of remote is, even that is not so high, is where they say, okay, in this particular period, we are struggling to raise liquidity, to raise money. We're going to extend the period we're going to pause paying people for six months, get our business together, we shall pay you back after six months. That's what sometimes we have seen globally. Like I've told you, close to 180 countries offer treasury bonds. No country 
Anyway, the world has ever defaulted and said we shall never pay you. What we see, they just restructured deals of treasury bonds and this, and it's rare. The last company, the last country that did that, that was seven, eight years ago, globally. That shows you how remote it is we have to talk about the risk in that regard. So open up the CSD account from any commercial banker you have, housing finance, anyone. Now, when you open it up, you have to know which ones do I go for. Which bond do you, when you go to the bank, sometimes, and if you are in Guru, if you are in Arua, you're going to go and talk to this teller. They might not know about treasure bonds, and highly likely so. Because somehow, somewhere, this knowledge has been so much in a small team. But just tell them, I want, I want the account, I want the form that helps me to buy government bonds. At that point, they will have to call someone who might know and they will get you that form. You do not need to travel to Kampala. You can do it wherever you are. My friend who, who said he's in Kabale, you can do it in Kabale. You can do it in Masaka. And the minimum you need to invest in a treasury bill or a treasury bond is 100000 Now, 100000 is what legally needs. But you are going to sit back and assess your needs and say, what much, how much do I need? What is my investment goal? And when you have the investment goal, then that drives you into how much you're going to end up investing. I'll first pause there and I take a few questions in that regard. Um, what's the logical minimum accepted at a unit trust? For unit trusts, the minimum is a hundred. Uh, most of them to open up an account is a hundred thousand, and you can top up with as little as twenty k, fifty k. Even if you have, let me give you a practical exp ex expectation. If you have you you operate a business that is highly on cash, downtown people retail business every single day you make almost 50000 and you have to even deposit it on a bank you can open up a unit trust account some of that money some of those unit trust companies now have a mobile money element in them every single year every single day you make money from the from your business get the 50 pass get that money deposit it in the unit trust 50000 every single day You'll be amazed on the profits you'll be making after a year. You'll be extremely amazed. You know? Just get every single time and say, okay, I will establish a mobile money account every single day. I will always go and deposit my 50000 using mobile money. So minimum open up an account is... um. A hundred for many of them, minimum is I think fifty, and I know some of them have even a twenty. Yeah, let me go to the messages. What happens when the government changes? I think uh, Joseph have talked about that. That we have given you an illustration that we have had so many government changes, and still the government has managed to pay. Why? And uh, for confidence, uh, for confidence of this. Uh, okay, for confidence of this conversation is there is a difference between the political arm of government and the technical arm of government. The technical arm rarely changes. That's why you see you find people who have been at Bank of Uganda or certain ministries, the technical people, and they have been there for 30 years. They have served all 45 years. They have served so many presidents. So that's the what? So what? We have seen, even in countries like Kenya, they have changed the presidents. We have seen in Tanzania still, even when the governments have changed, uh, payments have been made. So now someone is asking, if you have opened up, um, not to miss people's questions, I'm asking, uh, let me first answer certain, and then I, because I don't want to miss them up. Uh, 
Yes, you can always top up whenever you want. Like I've said, the minimum you need to invest at any one point is 100,000. Let's say if you have 1 million right now and you go and invest, tomorrow you find 150, you can still go and buy another bond and buy and buy and buy. Right? Every single minute you can go and buy a treasury bond whenever you want. They just for as long as you have a hundred k, you can walk in a bank and say, I want to buy another bond, another bond, another. Do not get tired. For as long as you feel like this is the journey you want to take on, do not get tired. Right? So if uh if um so if they um, the minimum you have, uh, I'm reading messages as I try to go through some of to add replies. So sorry when you see me a bit distracted. I just don't want to miss certain uh, uh, messages that are coming through. If your goal is to build your investment nest, I cannot even tell you stop. I will just tell you, I will just encourage you. When you open up your CSD account with any bank, with any bank, just keep going just keep going now the question is how much do you need to invest that one is going to depend on how much you have your goals some of us all we have is a million a month invest that you have a business that you have a business that you are operating and it's giving you some good profits in a particular year invest some of that James, you have asked a very good question, which I'm going to uh, answer. One, I'm putting a, a link in the group. I write a lot about treasury bonds. Some of the questions I might not answer them right now, but I will get most of the questions and they will form part of what I write. So um, use those to, you can add your email, click on that link, add your email, you always get the, my letters uh, in that. Also, I'm adding my phone number just in case after today or you want to kind of have this one session with either your circle or with your company and develop your investment strategy to know more, answer most of the questions I've not answered. I've added my phone number in the in the chat. Um, James has asked, there's a question I, I don't want to miss, which James asked, which I feel it's very, very important. Uh, can I use my deposit as a utility for a loan? Amazing. That's a very good question. And the answer is 100% yes. I, sh I don't know how much I should emphasize this. 100% yes. And there is two things actually very important here. You know when I'm talking to business people so they understand the language of borrowing and when you take the security, do you know when you take a security of land and you value your land, you say, if I'm, my land is valued at 60 million, and then the banker will tell you the first sell value is 45. So we are going to give you a loan of 45 million. Now in bonds, we don't have that language for first sell. In bonds, when, they have, when you go to a bank to take a loan and you are using your bond as security, they fair value it, not for sell it. They fair, they will say this bond is a hundred million. How much money is it going to be bringing in? Fifteen million every single year for you. They fair value that bond and they will say, okay, the fair value of this bond is ninety eight. Then they will give you the loan equivalent of that. Yes, to the bank it's easier to recover money through your treasury bond if you fail to pay than to a bond than to land. So they, it, it, the confidence levels the bank has by you using your bond as security is higher than when they use land or they use your property. So when you, if you are to invest in a treasury bond, and you, I actually, I would, I would encourage you, yes, for business people, yes, yes. I recently wrote an article, like I said, when you go to that website, you'll see so many, so many of those articles. And I said, to, even if you are employed, now I cannot emphasize this much, but if you are employed, you can borrow to invest in a treasury bond, especially for those who have 
very good terms at bar, at your employment places. You can access a bond a, 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 a loan at a fixed rate of 10%. We can go through the numbers with you and I'll show you how you can do that. And by the time you pay off the loan, you have more money in your treasury bond, you know? So I want to go to... Yes, so uh, someone who invests a UG, they have said they consider between 90 and 95% of the bond. Um, that's why I'm, I'm saying the fair value. Wait, fair value is not forced sell. Fair value, let, let me call, most of us understand the concept of land. The land is fair value. If you go to Chira right now, they will tell you if you buy 100, is just 80 million. That's the fair value. That's the market value. Then someone will tell you first sell value is 45 or 50 because you are selling it. In bonds, it's fair value, not first sell. So if the fair value of the bond is 95%, that's the loan they will give you. They do not undercut your asset that much because in the bonds, you can sell the bond in one day or the bank can actually buy the bond in just one day. Aisha is asking, I'm residing outside of the country. Can I invest in the USA? I'm residing in a country which is not Uganda, for example. Yes. How do I invest in the bonds or even open up a CSD account? Aisha, if you have a bank account in Uganda, you are good to go. If you have a bank account in Uganda, in any commercial bank, that's all you need and you are good to go. Now, I wanted to demonstrate uh, the power of compounding because I've talked so much, not the numbers yet. And yet I know this is where maybe questions might come in a little bit more. Um, allow me to share my screen again. Okay, I believe it's being visible. Let me use a little bit of, let me start with just a little bit of money. That's 25 million. Now, we have talked at length about your goals, what you want to do, what you want to invest in, where you, how you have to deploy your money. Let's use, let's take a, just a technical example that you are using this to establish an education fund. Right now, your child is three, four years. You have 15 years for them to go. Education is easy to use. Or let's say you want establishing your retirement fund. You are four, you are 30, 40, you know in six years you are going to retire. Whichever your goal is, you can use treasury bonds. Now, if someone has 25 million and they invest in a bond right now, in a 10, 15 year bond, the tax is 10%. We have already gone through that. That means their net return they are going to get is around 14%. And that means the profits you make in 2024, right now, if you were, if you had the 25 million and you walked to a bank right now and buy a 15 year bond, in 2024, by the time 2024 will end, you'll have got profits of around 3.4 million. Now, there is a question which someone asked, can you reinvest your coupons? Now, that's the, comp the co concept of compounding, which in finance we say it's the eighth wonder of the world. When you have 25, that's your starting position. In the first year, 2024, you make 3.4. You can withdraw that 3.4. Let's say you withdraw it and go eat it. It's your money or go use it for something else. It means in 2025, you will still have just 25 million and you just still make 3.4. So let's assume still you withdraw the 3.4. So, and you do that, that every time they give you for you, they give you uh, coupons, you keep withdrawing it and using it for something. By the 15th year, you would have got a total profit of around 47 million using it for whatever reason you want to use it for and they will give you back your investment of 25 million okay it's now 28 because you capped the investment to 3.4 the withdrawals 
So think about it this way. If I, I, I know I have even people who might be close to retirement. So it doesn't, you're about to access your NSSF. A hundred million. Right? At 100 million, you are almost guaranteed close to 14 million per year. That's almost. That's close to almost 1.2 million per month. And if you keep on withdrawing it, withdrawing it, withdrawing it, you can withdraw it for the next 15 to 20 years. And after. When you, after 2037, they'll give you back your 100 million. Yes, if that's your goal, we're going to look at other plans. You can always withdraw whenever you want. Every time that you want, you can always withdraw it. But is it the best strategy? For people, that is it. If you are 60, you don't have half to compound. And by the way, let me also talk about this because this is very, very important for our source community. He said, what happens if I pass on? No, bonds can be put in the tra in wheels, you know? You know that wheel where you say, I have 10 acres, my 10 acres, each acre, let it go to my child. I have five kids, so each child gets two acres. Yes, treasury bonds can be done that way also. That when one day, we, time comes for us to meet our maker, yes, it goes to your next of kin. You do not lose it. No hassle or bustle. Even if you did not put it in your will, but someone, someone who knows about it and they know about your bank account, they get the letter of administration, they go to Bank of Uganda, they will change that bond into their names for them to access this money. Because you might be like, but me investing up to 2037, will I be there in 2030? Yes. Majority of us are still young. We shall be here in 2037. We don't know who will be the president, but we shall be there. And you have, that money might be your life savior at that point in time. But even then, you can transfer it, put it into your will. And it's also important to say that you can sell your, you can transfer it to your child in, even when you are still there and say, okay, this one, it's for the benefit of Kakande Jr. Now, that's when you are withdrawing it. But what if you don't withdraw it and reinvest? Every time the government pays you, or bank, let me use actually Bank of Uganda. Every time Bank of Uganda gives you the profits, you reinvest it back. What happens? That's where we, go, we get into the magic. So in 2024, you have your 100 million. You can use any amount you have, but I trust I have... Um, well of people on the call, so they will appreciate the numbers. You have 100 million. At a net, you'll get your 13.9 million on your bank account. Assured it will come on that account, whether it's Standbit, DFCU, Centenary, whichever bank. If you get, the, in 2025, you invest this bond again. Then in 2025, you'll make 15 million. You see, you are now making more money than what you made the prior year before. In 2026, you make 18. In 2027, you make 20. So it keeps growing. A time is going to come when in 2037, you're making 76 million. This is you starting with 100 million, putting it in a bond, go do your other stuff. Do not bring any other money whatsoever into the bonds again that it keeps on growing and growing and growing, that at one point you are looking at 600 million. Right now, if I, I have seen uh, some people, you sell, you, you have 250 million. Okay, that's 2.5 million. You have 200, 250 million right now, and you buy a bond, it will give you 34 million every single year, net. Yesterday, but one, I finalized, uh, an investment deal for a client of mine, 400 million. And they are guaranteed 56 million every single year. Their goal is to make a, a minimum $1 million in 2037. And we designed the deal what they needed to do. You can see you start by 250 million and commit to letting that money grow into the bonds. 
They give you the profits, you put it back. And they give you, you put it back. And they give you, you put it back. Do not get other money anywhere else. Just keep growing just to that. By 2037, you'll have around 1.5 billion. But what about if you say, let me start with 25. Yes, you'll have 155 million. Maybe you can even say, let me start with 25 and I will top up every single year. That's this column here. And this, I'm rushing through it because I have 316 people. Uh, people and to all of us, our things might be different. Our, co our conversations might be, our circumstances might be different. So it might not necessarily address the numbers for you. So in that regard, I've put my number in the chat. You can reach out to me later. We can set up a session for you or for your company and your business and your people. And we'll go through what is tailored for you. So this is for illustration purposes. So you have 25 million. And say so every single year, I will also get another 10 million to you are a school person. You are a pharmacy. You have a pharmacy. You have a saloon. You are a farmer. So you're not going to get 100 million at once, but you start with 25. But every single year, I say, I'll also get another 25 and add it in. And you commit to doing it for 10, 15 years. If you invest 25 million in a bond every single year for the next 15 years, you will have a billion in. 2037. This is the same as someone telling you, if you started in 2010, because sometimes when you say people, when you give people the future, they, they feel like it's too far away. If someone started this thing in 2010, right now they will have, at 25 million per month, right now they will have a billion. And actually for 2010, it's even, this is low, because we are using 14% net. But in 2010, bonds were operating around 19%. And at 19%, by that time, you it, the returns were crazy. You know? Even last, even as recent as last year, but one in 2022, the return was 18.5. 18.5. I'm using 14 here. So let's actually let's benchmark it here in this regard that i you know i can easily say in 2037 and someone feels like 2037 yes now think about it retrospectively think about it from the past and say if i had 25 million in 2014 and i started on this journey to diversify then right now you'll have a billion in bonds and you'll be earning close to 12 million per month or 130 million per year And I'm not saying let's all of us get all our money and put it in the treasury bonds. It will crash, I assure you. No, we still need the entrepreneurial spirit. We still need those businesses. But diversify. Diversify. If you had the 25 million in the 2010 without any deposit, you by now you'll have around 155 million. If you had a child right now in 2010 who has five years and now they're about to go to university after 15 years, I don't think you'd be worried about school fees here. Right? So if in 2010, in 2010 you had you have you had your 250 million, and somehow you got a deal, God knows what, or you sold something, and it worked out, and you had a lucrative year. And deployed it right now, you'll be at 1.5 billion without adding a single thing. But what if you get a 250 million and opened it up? I try always compare, I always try to compare real estate with bonds, not to say one is better than the other, but to kind of show people a bigger picture. Though somehow people feel like, no, I'm attacking something. Right? So, but let me give you an example. If you had 250 million in 2010 and you deployed it in the US and in the bond, and every single year you said, let me add in just a 30 million. Right now, it'd be around 2.6 billion. Now, maybe if you didn't do it in 2010, 
now look at this column of 2024. That if you start now, this is where you will be in 2037. Now, 250 billion is maybe a lot. Let's say 25, we go back 25 million. If you start 25 million and committed it to adding, let's say, 20 million there every single year, you'll be close to a billion in 2023. It's the same concept looking forward. And this is at a minimum because I've literally capped the interest here at 14. We have seen bonds that have come at 16, 17, 18.5, like two, three years ago. And they are going to come in the future. Our government is also our government. You know? Actually, I mean, no, 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 not even in the future. Uh, last month, the bond that was sold, it yielded 16.75. At 16.75, that's a net return of what? Of 15%. Actually, 15 point something, you know? So it's that critical. Now, this is to illustrate the power of investments in treasury bonds. The number for you might be different. The, the circumstances might be different. You might all be, or you might have just a million. I don't know, say I always use the big money. Let's assume you have 2.5 million and you commit to adding 2 million every single year. Yes, you'll have at least 90 million. And in 2010, if you had 2.5 million and deployed it and every single year added 2 million somehow, somewhere in the bond, by now you'll be at 90 million. Guaranteed. And by the time you reach 90 million, it multiplies. You see, in, in 2010, you are making just 300k in profits. Now in 2023, you're making 10. You do not want to see how it grows when it moves from there. See, at one point, you're going to be making more money than what you started with. So that's the power of compounding when it comes to treasury bonds. And this is, it is not replacing your work. It's not replacing your job. It's not replacing your um, farming, not replacing your, your construction company, consulting, a pharmacy, hotel, hostel, restaurant, everything. You are doing what you are good at while also investing investing, investing, sending money to make money for you. I'll take on questions. I now have 20 minutes to go. I'll look at some of the questions and see what to answer from there. Okay. Um... Is it, is it best to reinvest? Julius is asking, is it best to reinvest every time you get the coupons? Now, that's for this was for illustrative purposes that you are investing every single year. But if you are to invest every single month, it means you have so much time to get even the compound. That compounding is even much more. Can the bonds be insured, Derek? I like that. Uh, yes, if you want to, but insurance is managed by Bank of Uganda. Bank of Uganda is um <laughs> is the one you are investing with. So you are already, I believe you're already insured. There is the power we underestimate. I'm going to, I'm not downplaying this, but we underestimate the power Bank of Uganda has over our financial systems in the right way. The technical people at Bank of Uganda are incredibly good. And G of Cab, I think you cannot add on your initial bond. That's not true. Um, I know there are so many things uh, that people are asking. I will just suggest, if you're not so sure of what you're saying, do not put the answer there because you might confuse. I don't want to confuse. Um, how do I access my money after 15 years? You know what? They will put it on your bank account. Like I said, you use the bank account to invest. So every year they put back some of that money on the bank account every single six months. Then you can reinvest back, reinvest back, reinvest back. Um, Alina, they recently yielded 16.75 years. Uh, that's a question I'd send. Let me explain it that way. So it is. it was a 20-year bond. 
it was sold at a discount. So for someone who had 100 million, who wanted a bond of 100 million, they paid it close to 91 million. It meant that day one, you made the profit of 9 million. Then going forward, they also give you profits. You know, we make money in two ways, by spending less or earning more. So in bonds, you can have two of the things at the same time. Spend less, and that's what happened in the bond, and still earn. And when we combine those two, that's why we use the word yielded. Say if I use bank ABSA and they close shop, what happens? Yes, they don't just close shop. Those accounts either go to Bank of Uganda, like all they go to another commercial bank. You do not lose your money. One. Two, the bank, that investment account is not with ABSA Bank. ABSA Bank is the pathway to Bank of Uganda. We cannot all of us go to Bank of Uganda to open up a CSD account. Your investment is with the Bank of Uganda CSD system. Let me just say for ease of understanding is with Bank of Uganda. How often are coupons available in the year? Sydney, thank you so much. You, they pay coupons for every bond. It pays coupon twice a year. But you can invest in different bonds for you to easily get bonds uh, coupons every single month. I can if I have. I tend to try not to use myself as an example when I'm doing these talk shows. I have quite a number of bonds and they get me coupons almost every single month. Every single month. I know something is coming on my bank account. Is it possible to transfer the bond from one bank to another? And if so, yes, yes, yes. Your, your bond is not with a commercial bank. Your bond is not with the Centenary. Your bond is with the Bank of Uganda. Your bond is with Bank of Uganda. So even if you move to another bank, you okay, your account is not... Actually, when you open up that account, you realize the account they will give you will have IV, INVS. That account is not your standard bank of commercial bank account. That, bank, that account, what we call the CSD account, Central Securities Depository Account, that account is with the Bank of Uganda. So do not worry with any bank closing or you moving to another bank. No, it is with the Bank of Uganda. Agnes, can I buy a bond online? Unfortunately, with Uganda, not yet. Unfortunately, but the good news are we are going there. Um, the good news are Bank of Uganda is coming up with a system to buy bonds both on mobile money and bank accounts. So uh, mobile money and online. So when it comes, we believe that will be a game changer for all of us. We cannot wait. I'm not in the country. I sometimes get tired of sending uh, forms, signed forms. So right now, but we are going there. So you, you better enter the arena and land the arena when it's still a little bit murky because when it gets interesting, it's going to be interesting because like in Kenya, you just have to have your phone and test uh, the same way they do star one, two, three, four, five, God knows it's going to be the same, you know? Harriet here is talking about he does for uh, the diaspora account. Um, uh, Jesse, how to talk to bonds available for buying? Uh, you can buy with uh, on this primary market. It's once a month uh, for bonds and once every two weeks for uh, a bill. Or you can buy from a secondary market every single time you want. Okay. Uh, now let me go through some comments. What's the minimum amount to invest in Noah? We said it's 100,000. Let me hope I'm not missing out uh, something. Is the CSD the one used to buy shares? You know, those are two, honestly, those are two different. Okay, they have a different name, but they are two different ones. Uh, one is for managed at the side of USE, Uganda Securities Exchange. One is managed at Bank of Uganda. We are hoping one day they are going to get integrated and you can do it with one. 
but not. Um, can you advise the current salary earners who are saving say 500 per month in treasury bills? I would tell them, Jacqueline, I would say you are better served not in the treasury bills, you are better served either by a unit trust or by a bond. If you're a salary earner and your incomes are still low, you want to maximize your return, I would actually tell you, you go for the longest bond. Go for the 10-year bond. You get that 500 UK and put it there in the bond. You will see how it will grow. In the fourth year, you will even be making more money than what you are depositing every single month. Uh, John is asking, please simplify the primary and secondary market for the bonds. Um, okay, this will be a little bit longer. Uh, Stacy, bonds are available to buy on the secondary market every single time you want. So the secondary market is you buying a bond from someone or a company that is not a bank of Uganda. That is That means buying it from your friend, buying it from me, or buying it from commercial banks, or buying it from insurance companies. Now, what we see in Uganda mostly is buying from commercial banks. You can walk in a commercial bank right now and they'll give you a bond. If you have money, you will walk away with your bond. The primary market is when you buy it from Bank of Uganda. So Charles, I hope I've explained the difference in that. I'll bet how do you contact uh, Bank of Uganda? You do not. Uh, let me emphasize this. If you are to invest in a secondary, a primary bond, you go through a commercial bank. You go through a commercial bank. So it's very important. So, and I say, it's important when you go to them, you tell the commercial bank, I want to buy from Bank of Uganda. It's the commercial bank that helps you to go to uh, the commercial bank, uh, to Bank of Uganda. Uh, like I, I repeat, um, this, most of the questions that you have, I have written about them or I'm going to write about them. So I might not answer directly everything, uh, in that in today, you can see it's over questions are flowing in, but I just say, this is a website that I've put in the link, a website. You just click on the link, add your email. You always get my emails in your, what, in your inbox. Um, or oh, for those uh, who have want to take on this journey, I might not. I, I give my public number. It's only on WhatsApp. Please do not call it. Um, like you have seen, it's not in you. I'm not in Uganda. Just send a text. I might not reply you in a time. I'm I'm already seeing. I have already a hundred texts from this call. I think people are appreciative of this but I'll get to you. I have over the weekend, I'll get to you, I'll what? So whatever the case is, I cannot exhaust almost everything, but it's been a pleasure to have this conversation. The super, recording, super. Uh, the you where it will be is. Thank you so much. Wow, wow, wow. Thanks a lot, Alex. Uh, brilliant, brilliant presentation. A very big audience today. We had over 360 people on the call, I think at some point, 370. A big thank you. I guess, I think as Alex has put it, this is a topic close to uh, people's hearts. But more importantly, I think Alex, we want to thank you for the passion you have shown in this space uh, to educate Ugandans about something which many have ignored but it's possible that is within reach. I can almost bet with confidence that everyone on this call has a bank account. And uh, if you have a bank account, really what that means is that as soon as you finish this call, uh, Alex's call, I want you to go to your bank and say, by the way, I think I should open up this account. I should be able to buy a treasury bill and a bond. I think that would be your to-do right after here. And if you have the 100,000, say, you know what, I want to try it out. Maybe try out with 100, with a million. And let me keep doing it. The same way people are passionate about, uh, personally, Alex, I'm, a, I'm very passionate about real estate. And there is no year that passes where you don't say, I can do something in real estate. And the same way I think Alex has put it, you actually extend that passion to the financial markets, the treasury bills, the bonds. And so there is no year that passes. There is no month that passes before I do that. 
Alex, I was uh, quite fascinated with uh, what you mentioned that you earn an income every month because you have bought a number of uh, treasury bonds. And I think that is practical advice. It is, you know what? Uh, most people who are in rentals, they want the, the, the tenant to pay. So here we are saying also you can turn your government into a tenant who can be able to pay you an, an amount of money every month consistently. And as Alex has rightly put it, if there is anyone to trust, you trust your, your state. The state is the one which is looking after everything. So when they promise they will pay, uh, since uh, Alex said since the 60s, they have kept paying. And we have had a number of challenging governments, but here we are. Since that time, they have paid and met every bond which they have and, and treasury bill which they have set out. So really, at the heart of this message is action. And uh, I think our final message would be, go and act. Alex, I'll just give you a minute to just say bye to the audience and uh, just uh, make some closing remarks, and then we can wrap up. Thank you so much, Ronald. I want to thank each and every one of you that tuned in and all the people that helped to kind of answer questions as they came through. I couldn't answer each and every one of them. Uh, this is a journey that we say it's a concept of diversify. I'm not saying do not do A versus B. It's a concept of saying do that real estate, do that business, do that pharmacy, do be that employed, but also start investing seeing it through plan ahead even even if you say you are investing in uh, agriculture have the plan and say how do i sustain this it's a concept that is we are building up i think at the tune of 2010 that's when the concept of saving became hard ronald where it became bank, all the different banks were gearing up to that maybe the 20th we are saying now let's start the concept of investing 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 that way, we make sure people are benefiting. You have your money working for you in that regard. So thank you so much for everyone that has tuned in. It's been an extreme pleasure. I have had over 300 people. If uh, Dennis, if De Derek, when he reached out, he had told me I would have over 300 people. I would have told him <laughs> I would have got scared a little bit. But I'm happy for all of you. I've shared uh, my number and my what. Uh, Whatever the question is, for those who have circles, investment clubs, who have, whichever the case is, just reach out. We can have a conversation. Uh, the recording, um, Enterprise Uganda will share it. And I want to thank Enterprise Uganda for this. If possible, it's something we can do once every, every year. I know I'm in a crazy time zone, but this is something I'm really passionate about. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure having this conversation with you. Thanks a lot, Alex. It's been an honor having you. Such such an elaborate conversation. A big thank you to everyone who has joined. Uh, we shall share the, the link and uh, the presentation is also on our YouTube channel. Uh, you will be able to find it there, I think, by the end of the day. But we are also going to send you an email uh, with the presentation. For those of you who would want to have uh, a visit uh, from one of our business advisors or business counselors, I'm going to ask uh, Derek uh, in our back office to uh, to share with you a link. You can just type in there and say, you know what, I want someone to come and check on my business, how it is doing. We'll be back next uh, next Thursday uh, with an, and next Thursday actually we are hosting a South African entrepreneur who is in the mining sector to share with us his story of venturing into a complex industry. So please do log on and uh, and, and and engage uh, in that conversation. Thank you so much for being here. All the best. Keep pushing, keep fighting. And most importantly, from Alex's conversation, go and act. Make sure that you have done something. You have pushed the pin a bit. If you haven't opened that account, go to your bank and open it so that we are making progress. All the best. Stay blessed.